Hello everybody, welcome back to the Cobblestone Chronicles. As always, this is Zuljin. So, I thought it was about time that I show you, I've been working on this behind the scenes a little bit, and it's, it's really, really not even close to finished. But, <laughs> I at least got a path down. This is right underneath my forge, and this is basically where the slime chunks are that I found. I've started to build a stairway, but I'm not real sure where I want it to come out yet. And every once in a while, yay, a slime! Every once in a while, I find slimes down here. Now, I am mainly just after slime balls from these guys, so I really need to get a looting sword sooner or later. But it is helping me with the slime production. And I hadn't shown you guys any progress on this at all. Like I said, the project has really been pretty boring. It's been digging and lighting and um, I do not want to use that awesome pick that I have that big old fortune 3 deal so because it's silk touch you know so I mainly just been kinda just digging it out you know digging it out with regular diamond picks here and there when I, I don't feel like recording or not don't feel like recording but when I don't really have anything to record or I'm just playing passively in my downtime um, but I wanted to show you guys this and kind of talk to you about what I was thinking. I need to do some lighting in the upper caves and stuff. That's one of the reasons that I don't spawn a whole lot of slimes here. But it, it's good and it helps me add to my collection. So every once in a while I just form this and it works out pretty well for me. Alright you guys, got a little bit more organized here. And I need to change up the format just a little bit for today. I'll tell y'all a little story while I'm grabbing stuff. Yes, that was a diamond hoe. <laughs> I accidentally made it in operation cleanup. <laughs> um, I've been working the smurf a little bit, and I got some good old stacks of seeds. I don't think this is going to be enough for what I want to do. But the smurf is not only going to be for flower and form production. I mean, flower production. It's going to be for seeds a lot, too. See, for wheat... I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I guess I should take this opportunity to show you right quick. Some of the new subscribers may not have. I have a redstone wheat form that I never really use because bread is not the most practical source of food. But it's up here. It's simple. The little redstone piston operation opens up, makes all the wheat flow down the center. And this one actually makes all the wheat flow. And you have to replant. But I'm not big on replanting wheat. I actually want to do this for the look more than anything. Uh, around the form house I had said a long time ago that I was gonna do this anyway so what I plan on doing I don't have the patch yet the uh, the snapshot and I'll tell y'all why when I decided that I was gonna do the snapshot update uh, I had a problem launching every time I ran Minecraft it would just fail at launch so rather than fool with it because I did have to fool with it quite a bit just to get it back to my normal state Rather than fool with it a whole lot, I actually decided that I was not going to do it yet. So I'm just going to wait for the official update. Like I had kind of mentioned I was going to do before, but it uh, it was a little disheartening. You know, I wasn't too happy about that, but some of this I'm going to have to get rid of. Because I was ready to do some decorating, you know, I really was. And I want access to those cobblestone, I want access to those wood half slabs. I don't know why I said cobblestone half slabs. I want access to all the wood half slabs and all the wood stairs, the different colors. One of the biggest things about decorating is that you want as many things as you can put into it. Not to make it look busy, but just to make it look streamlined. And uh, There's just things I want to do, kind of like the sandstone plaza deal. So, what I figured I would do is get a little bit of dirt out here and do what I had said I was going to do with my born project a long time ago and that is to make large fields of wheat and on this side it's not going to be real big it's just going to kind of connect to the born area a bit but on the other side it's going to be really really huge and when we get to the point to where we have the patch update then I'll continue the current project and the decorating because I don't want to do something and then have to redo it you know that's just that's just kind of how I roll you know I like to be able to do something look at it and say I'm happy with that all right so I got pretty much it's just a little extended there and I'm gonna come out with this fence just a bit more and then we're gonna 
decide where I actually want to place this stuff at. So I'm going to bring it all the way out to the water, I guess. And, okay. This ought to work. So, one of the bigger projects that I'm thinking about too, y'all, is I want to get that, um, that lighting project going that I was talking to y'all about. I want to get the night sensors on the lights. And I know I'm going to need to hunt for more glowstone to do what I want to do because I don't have enough glowstone for the lights that I currently want because I'm going to place that much evenly and much closer together. So I'm definitely going to need to do a nether trip real soon. But the biggest thing that I want for that day-night sensor is the idea that it's unreliable. Like, um, I got a good friend that y'all might have seen, Static52. He goes by Menace. Uh, Static has trouble with his day-night sensor all the time. I haven't seen B00 have any trouble with it, but I'm really, really not interested in having it not work some of the time. And Asuma did a tutorial a while back that was an extension of uh, an already uh, done tutorial, but he did uh, an array for the actual uh, for the actual day-night sensors. And the day-night sensors is something that I'm going to need to work with anyway, because I have some redstone projects that I want to use with the day-night sensors involved. So. Uh, not in Cobblestone Chronicles for my other videos, but it's just part of the idea of getting better with it and really learning the stuff, you know. Let's see. I need it to come out here. I'm going to get it all the way to the end. But yeah, so I'm going to be working on that and they won't stay tilled, so I'm going to have to plant them as I go. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. No big deal. Let me just plant these. But the the idea of having a... Uh, day-night sensor array that's gonna be pretty large okay and it's not gonna look right at all like it's not gonna be part of anything so what I'm thinking about doing is an idea that I had a little while back I'm probably not gonna use it in the most practical aspect but I think it would be cool if I would do a power plant now if Minecraft had anything that I can use uh, for rope that the redstone can sit on or if redstone can just free float in the air like power lines it would be nice but naturally we can't do that so what I decided that I was gonna do is make a couple of sources that I can run different things off of underground and I'm not probably not gonna use it you know I'm not gonna stretch redstone uh oh I'm not going to stretch redstone all the way out to every project that I want. I have no dirt right now. Uh, let me do this. Yeah, I'm not going to pro I'm not going to stretch redstone out to every piece of uh, of of machinery that I have <laughs> working, you know. So, it's not going to work, but I want two things out of it, okay? I want a centralized clock that I can rely on something dependable, something minecart driven, like the lighthouse video that I did, namely to drive the lighthouse. And that's going to be a clock that's just running, okay? Not a clock in the sense of something that tells time, but in the sense that I can use it to um, make redstone signals just repeat over and over again in sequence. And the next thing that I want is the the day-night sensor array, which is going to take up quite a bit of space if I'm going to do it big enough. So, that being said, that day-night sensor array is actually going to take up a lot of room, and the clock is going to take up some room. We might be able to connect all of that in toward the market district and do a power plant. Now, I don't want the power plant in the the, the market district, specifically like in town. Um, and I also don't want the power plant right in the craftsman's district either because it doesn't really fit. So it might bleed into maybe the residential district somewhere in the neighborhood or between the two. I'd like you guys uh, to give me some input on that. I really don't know where to put it. Y'all tell me where y'all think it would best fit. I know it's kind of hard to tell right now because I don't really have a lot of them. I don't have any of the market district done outside of some street layout. 
but I'd like to know just to get my planning ahead. And that day night sensor is probably something that we're going to do before some of the market district as well. I know we keep putting the market district off, but a lot of these projects that I want to do, um, they can't really be done until those updates pass. And I don't know when that's going to be. So I would just rather get those knocked out and to where I can enjoy enjoy the fact that I have uh, this project running and it'll just be something ongoing so as long as I keep the content fresh I guess you guys will forgive me right <laughs> anyway um, I also have some more server stuff to do I hear Breeze getting her server back online and uh, I'll get to play with Jordan and Spence and those guys um, been playing a bunch with Static and I still haven't had a chance to play a whole lot of Shanks at Dawn with the guys. I've been playing a little bit solo, getting my tree done and stuff, but all in all, I haven't played enough. Not not as much as I want anyway. So I guess what I'm going to do, you guys, is show y'all the second part of the layout. And that is going to be on this side, I believe. I think I'm going to keep this side of the form enclosed. But I'm going to run some fence. I don't know if I'm going to have enough fence. And I'm going to have to do some land work actually to make this flat. So what I'll do is I'm going to do a little montage for y'all. Get some work done on this area. Do some flattening and some fencing. Some hoeing and some planting. <laughs> so I hope y'all enjoy it. guys there you have it look at the wheat <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought it would but it's really cool I would have done more out and knock down that hill and make this go f further but I want you guys opinion on something I could easily do more wheat I could even do more wheat on this side but there may be some opportunity for some different forms around here I also can do large, large patches of flowers, like flower groves, not necessarily flower fields, just flower groves. 
I can also do a lot of ferns. I can do, there's just tons of different things I can do. I can even do watermelon and pumpkin fields. Y'all just give me some ideas, guys. This will be long-term projects. Not nothing that we're going to try to knock out in the very near future. I'm more concerned on just getting some stuff taken care of with the lighting in the next couple of episodes. And, um, and really getting that worked out. So this is going to be a real short video, but... I hope y'all like the way everything turned out. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I could have maybe enclosed these sides with a little bit of fence and took away from some of the grazing room. Not, not. I, I'm not real sure if that bothers me or not. But uh, when it, when it's all full, it looks. It sure should look pretty good. I think I'm gonna like it a lot. But uh, thanks so much for watching, you guys. This is Zuljin signing off, and have a good one.